I lived right in downtown LA with some artists and uh, that was a very fun time. What kind of experience was that like? I mean, it, you went there and then only a year, like did, were you hoping to achieve something there or you just, just no. were like nice place to visit? I can tell you the story. It's okay. Story. Do it. So when I, was, when I was working on the motorcycle documentary, I went out with some friends to a motorcycle rally in South Dakota. Okay. Sturgis, I'm assuming. Yeah, Sturgis. And uh, we were, you know, there was this woman reading tarot cards, and one of my friends said, That's Rusty from Mask. The re that's the real Rus Rusty. Oh. So Mask, the movie with that Cher. Cher played, but this was the real Rusty. Okay. So she was reading tarot cards. So I was like, I'm going to have her read my tarot cards. First so of all, that's like, fantastic. Like, like you literally yeah. met Rusty from Mask. That's, that's, oh, yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Doesn't look anything like Cher, but right. a lovely person in her own way. But so she reads my tarot cards and she says, You're going to come visit me in Los Angeles. And I said, What? I'm not ever going to Los Angeles. You know, like a true. I was living in Chicago at the time. Yeah. And um, so, you know, I'm at the motorcycle rally. We, we, we met, we, me and my friends met this this old hippie guy that rode um, a BMW and he had a Stig sidecar on it. And it was the craziest thing. I mean, I took photos of him, of course, and he's in the book. And he said, you know, Judy, why don't you fly to Albuquerque and I'll meet you there and then we can go in the sidecar, the, my bike and sidecar to Los Angeles. And I was like, okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, that's what I did. <laughs> yeah. And we went to Rusty's house. Huh. And she was right. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? So it that's is. how I ended up in LA. And I actually lived with her for about a month. Come on now. I am not kidding. She lived in the valley. <laughs> she lived in the valley. And I lived with her for like a month, and I met these artists, and then eventually went to LA and lived in this warehouse with all these artists, where pretty much where the ten and five highways freeways meet. Okay, that was fun. You know, was, had a blast there. Great experience. Um, worked for a motorcycle magazine, doing pho photography. A magazine owned by Larry Flint. Actually. Okay, I was going to say a legit motorcycle magazine or a motorcycle yeah. themed magazine. No, it was a motorcycle themed magazine that was owned by Flint, Larry Flint. He owned a lot, a lot of magazines. Right. But that was kind of fun. So that, you know, kind of paid for my beer and tacos. <laughs> uh, <you know. laughs> of course it did. Yeah, yeah. So that was really fun. Um, yeah, Rusty, she was interesting. She taught me how to read tarot cards. I've always wondered uh, about that. I've even talked to people who make tarot cards, and I've never really thought to ask, like, what's the concept behind them? Well, it's it's it, if you you can read tarot cards with a deck of playing cards. The con the, the 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 it's very similar to a deck of playing cards. But okay. so the the minor there's the minor arcana and the major arcana. The minor arcana kind of mirrors the four suits of a deck of playing cards. Okay. So that's kind of interesting. And then there's these major arcana cards that are like, you know, the world or, or death or, uh, you know, the, the hermit, things like that. Huh? Yeah. So she taught me how to read tarot cards and she worked, uh, on a 1-800 tarot card line. That's how she of made course. her money. <laughs> yeah. And she, you know, she still lived the being, you know, that movie thing and everything. You know, that was her persona. She didn't work for the Dion Warwick tarot card line or psychic card line, did she? I don't know. I don't remember all that detail, but uh, she, she was really good at it. Huh. Um, it was kind of crazy how good she was at it. And she, wow. that's where I learned to read tarot cards. So I've done that here and there. Really? Like you've gone in, like you've set up shop in a booth or something somewhere and done that? I have. In fact, before the, the COVID pandemic plague, I, um, the Spring Green General store 
I read tarot cards a couple Sundays in the winter there. How do you approach minutes- somebody to do that? Well, we were selling, we were, we would sell our honey in the Spring Green General Store. Oh, okay. She's there, one of our vendors. Yeah. And, um, you know, she was like, I'm always, you know, and I got to know Karen, the woman that owns it, owns the store. She's like, I'm always looking for things in the winter because, you know, Spring Green, American Players Theater, you know, there's a lot of traffic, but come winter, it's like, you right. know, out, out in the country. And I said, well, how about if we did uh, tarot card readings, $10 for, 10 bucks for 10 minutes. Well, so the first time we did it, we I only did it like three times before the plague hit. Mm-hmm. We were booked. I was like booked. Wow. Yes. We started at like noon and three till three o'clock and it was like bam, 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 ten minutes. I would I didn't get a break. I <laughs> it was so crazy. I mean and then and afterwards I was just like this. Oh my god, <laughs> I said, I'm a charlatan, you know, these people just, it's like people love that stuff. Yeah. Even if it's just, you're, you're just giving them a bunch of smoke and mirrors. But I mean, sometimes, you know, you know, it's like being that social anthropologist, you kind of just can feel things with people. Mm -hmm. I get that. that. Yeah. So I attribute my tarot card reading skills to Rusty. (laughs) 